I guess going to all of you. Is my screen visible to all of you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, very good evening to all of you. Uh, we will start our lecture and we will discuss about nucleic acids today. These two nucleic acids are DNA and RNA. Now we need to know why they are called as nucleic acid. Actually, they are present in the nucleus or we can say that they are associated with the area called nucleoid in, in prokaryotes. That's why we call them uh, nucleic. And why this acid? Because presence of phosphate group makes these nucleic acids into uh, an acid. So that's why they are known as nucleic acids. Now these nucleic acids can be uh, of two types. These are RNA and DNA. DNA can be of various types and RNA can be of various types. All those details we are going to study in this chapter. Let me once again mention that in your textbook, this much detail is not available, but without understanding DNA structure, there will be too many things that you will not be able to understand. That's why I'm expressing uh, explaining about these things in detail. The full form of DNA is called deoxyribonucleic acid. Okay, so we will know that deoxyribo and nucleic acid. What do we mean by this deoxy? Deoxyribose stand for one of the component of DNA that is deoxyribose sugar. So we found DNA, find DNA at what places? What are the locations where DNA can be found? Class? Anyone? Ma'am, in nucleus. And in nuclear material. Okay. But apart from that, you must say that in mitochondria. Mitochondria. And chloroplast. Very good. So, this is genetic material of most of the organisms. Apart from a few viruses, uh, it is genetic material for most of the organisms and it carries that information. So, uh, actually, uh, it was not easy to see the structure of DNA. Uh, the scientist name, Frederick Mischer, first, uh, like, uh, identified that there must be some kind of acidic structure present in the uh, nucleus, and he uh, named it as nuclei. From here starts the path for this. So you can see after his comment on 1868, almost after 100 years, it was James Watson and Francis Creek who described the double helical model structure of DNA. By this time, it was known to scientists that uh, these are the components of DNA, but how these components are arranged, how they are bound with each other at what point can be described only after the uh, description of the structure of DNA by uh, these two people, that is James Watson and Francis Crick. Although uh, this discovery is known as one of the milestone in the biology, their discovery is not glorified. Uh, it was said that there was another scientist named Rosalind Franklin. She had this idea and after their death, her death, they stole this idea and uh, got Nobel Prize out of it. So these are Watson and Crick. So 
actually uh, this rosalyn franklin and morris wilkins the morris wilkins were working with rosalyn franklin and uh, they helped to uh, like uh, steal this concept edwin chargaff worked close to them and he proposed a famous rule called chargaff rule we will see later on um morris wilkin ke lab mein kaam karte the rosalind franklin and she was the person who thought that by using which using which method we can see dna because looking into dna was not possible at that time and if you are using the electron microscope the uh, discovery was not that much prominent at that time so they used if x ray diffraction on wet dna fibers so when dna fibers absorb water if you are throwing x rays towards them they uh, like uh, refract the x rays and uh, from the refraction pattern this kind of images can be form and these images will be able to help us uh, know the structure but unfortunately she died and the uh, concept was got nobel awarded with nobel prize so if you look into the structure of dna these are the three main components of dna one is d oxidiose which is a pentose sugar second is a base these bases are called nitrogenous base because they have lots of nitrogen present in them and third one is the phosphate so these bases can be of of four types these three things join together to give you this dna strands so two helical structures are there which are connected by such kind of ladder like structure so this is the structure of dna up to this part anyone any doubt beta class no ma'am ma'am can you repeat the structures which structure i should ma'am dna structure whole no ma'am from the second one dna has three main components ha so these are the names of components beta they combine to be ladder like structures like this got okay. it is a simple name we are going to learn about them one by one so uh, this is the dna nucleotide nucleotide is made up of base that is nitrogenous base this nitrogenous base can be of four type adenine guanine cytosine and thymine these base add with deoxyribose sugar which is a pentose sugar you can see 1 2 3 4 and fifth carbon is there so phosphate is attached to the fifth carbon and it can be attached with the third carbon too so this is the nucleotide nitrogenous base and deoxyribose sugar when they connect we call them nucleoside the moment phosphate is added we call it nucleotide in case of rna basic structure is seen only in place of deoxyribose sugar you have ribose sugar why you can see in this part one oxygen is there in ribose this is removed in deoxyribose so deoxyribose that means oxygen is removed that's why we call it deoxyribose and second difference is in case of rna thymine that is symbolized by t is absent it is uracil which is present so let us now know about the nitrogenous bases if nitrogenous base is having one six membered ring we call it pyrimidine examples are thymine cytosine and obviously if you are considering rna it is uracil too in puri puri purines there are two rings one six membered ring and one five membered ring purines are of two type one is adenine other is guanine okay uh these rings it's like wrong way of drawing them they are not only similar to benzene ring they have 
heterocyclic structure that means we have nitrogen also as a part of ring other than carbon so these are the structures uh, have a close look at it you don't have to remember exactly the structure it is never asked neither in board nor in uh, like uh, entrance examination but you need to have a rough idea so that you can identify them and you should understand at which point what is making bond Any doubts regarding nitrogen as basis, beta? No, parent compounds are what? Yes, beta. No, Can you repeat? Ah, uh, can you speak a bit loudly? Ma'am. Yes, Veda. Ma'am, he is asking what are parent compounds. Parent compound means this is the basic skeletal structure. This is the basic skeletal structure. You can see it is same for adenine as well as guanine. The only difference is in case of adenine there is presence of NH2 group. In guanine it is presence of oxygen, and NH2 group is present over here. And in adenine there is addition of one. So parent compound means it is same for everyone. Only alterations are highlighted over here. Same in case of pyri pyrimidine. This is the basic structure. The difference is observed only to the points which are actually explained. Understood? Yes. Okay. So uh, this is the nucleotide structure. Uh, nitrogenous bases, ribose, sugar, deoxyribose sugar, and phosphate. Uh, I want you people to remember the bonds. See, if you consider deoxyribose sugar, the carbon number one is always bounding, uh, have creating the bond with the nitrogenous bases. Now, carbon number three. And carbon number five is free to bind with the phosphate. Okay, so this is the structure of single nucleotide. But we know that DNA is a long strand. It's not that simple. That single nucleotide is there. Many such nucleotides should bind with each other to give you a DNA structure. This part describes what I already told that nucleoside means base plus sugar, and nucleotide means when phosphate is added to nucleoside, we call it nucleotide. Okay, now so this is how it is done. Uh, first of all, deoxyadenosine when uh, adenine is bound with the deoxyribose sugar, we call it deoxyadenosine at carbon number one. Then one phosphate added, added, so we call it deoxyadenosine monophosphate. If two are added, we call it deoxyadenosine diphosphate. And if third one is added, we call it deoxyadenosine triphosphates. So that's not all, as I said, we need to understand how this structure is coming into picture by addition of uh, things. You can see here clearly, if I consider this is one nucleotide, this is one nucleotide, this is other nucleotide present in other DNA strands. We can see you know, two double like helical structures like this. So this one is this strand and the other one is this strand. So what is the relationship and how they are attached that we need to understand? This guanosine is in attachment with the 
cytosine. Now, what are these three dotted lines? We are called hydrogen bond. I described already to you what hydrogen bond is. There is a reason why two structures of DNA or two strands of DNA are attached to each other via a hydrogen bond. The property of hydrogen bond is it's not as strong as covalent or ionic bond. Understood, beta? It is not at all strong like covalent or ionic bond. But don't you think that DNA is something we need to preserve? Can we afford to have a bond like this which is not very strong? What is your opinion? Class? Let me please repeat the question. Come, come up with your opinion. No problem even if it is wrong. Class. Anyone, any guess? No one wish to guess. Dhruvachi, Bolo, you feel there should be hydrogen bond between these two? Um, yes, I think. Why, even if it is a weak bond, why do you think two strands should be stabilized? Bolo. It is because DNA strands can be coiled throughout their life. Do you think they need to be separated also? Yes, yes or no? Yes, yes. yes ma'am. When, when DNA replicates. So much nahi hai. Aap kya bol rahe ho? Yes, beta. Ma'am, aapne wo coiling wala bola wo kya bol rahe ho? Matlab so much nahi hai. मैंने आपको बोला कि दो स्ट्रैंड्स जो है उन दोनों के बीच में हाइड्रोजन बॉन्ड होता है अब ये हाइड्रोजन बॉन्ड होना सही है क्योंकि हाइड्रोजन बॉन्ड काफी वीक बॉन्ड होता है डू यू थिंक हैविंग हाइड्रोजन बॉन्ड इज करेक्ट Yes, Ayushi, we, uh, what do you want to say, Vita? Ma'am, if you have hydrogen bond, then you can have such a thing that if there is any other chemical bond, then you don't react with it. Yes, but why hydrogen bond? That's why my question is. You know, at the time of DNA replication, at which stage DNA replication takes place, Vita? S phase. S phase. So at the time of the DNA replication, if you are copying DNA, these two DNA strands need to be get separated from each other, no? And during protein synthesis also, when DNA is instructing uh, ribosome via messenger RNA, it need to be separated. If this bond is too strong, then it will be difficult for cell to Separate it very various times, isn't it? Yes. That is yes, why. Ye bolte na saathi hath barana ka concept wo liya hi na. Hydrogen bond is a weak bond if you consider about single bond. But agar bahut saare hydrogen bonds hai, then it will be turning up into a very strong bond. That's why 
डीएनए में हर नाइट्रोजीनस बेस ऑफ द कंप्लीमेंट्री स्ट्रैंड वी विल नो लेटर ऑन कि व्हाट डू वी मीन बाय कंप्लीमेंट्री स्ट्रैंड मतलब जो दो स्ट्रैंड्स होते हैं दे आर कनेक्टेड विद ईच अदर बाय अ वेरियस नंबर ऑफ आई कैन से हाई नंबर ऑफ नाइट्रोजीनस बेसिस बहुत सारे नाइट्रोजीनस बेसिस से वो एक दूसरे से कनेक्टेड रहते हैं तो एज दे आर कनेक्टेड विथ सो मेनी हाइड्रोजन बॉन्ड्स अल्टीमेटली उनकी स्ट्रक्चर स्टेबल हो ही जाती है देयर इज नो प्रॉब्लम ऑफ गेटिंग अनस्टेबल स्ट्रक्चर इज इट क्लियर टू एवरीवन मैम यस बेटा तो मैम अगर इस कांसेप्ट में हम ऐसा कह सकते हैं कि हिस्टोन बॉन्ड्स इसलिए प्रेजेंट होते हैं क्योंकि ये हाइड्रोजन बॉन्ड्स वीक होते हैं नहीं नहीं हिस्टोन्स ऑल टुगेदर अलग रीजन के लिए प्रेजेंट होता है हिस्टोन के चार पार्ट डीएनए कॉइल होता है यस खुशी मैम ये जो यहाँ पे डायग्राम है उसके ऊपर और नीचे थ्री और फाइव लगे हैं उसका मतलब क्या होगा आई एम कमिंग टू इट आई एम कमिंग टू इट सी इट नॉट ओवर ओके मैम नाउ आई विश टू शेयर लाइक मोर इलाबोरेट स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ दिस जिसमें आपको ये बहुत अच्छे से यू विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड सी दिस इज द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ डी एन ए you can see this is one strand this is other strand and uh, this part is the nucleotide of one strand this part is the nucleotide of other strand now kushi uh, asked me a question ke mam ye 3 prime aur 5 prime kya hoga consider karo ab pehle ye samajh lo ki is it clear ke do strands ek dusre se kaise connected rehte hain is that part clear with you adding in yes, all this pair with thiamine this is called rule of complementary adding in jo ke purine hai wo hamesha thiamine ke sath bind karega aur un dono ke beech mein do hydrogen bonding hongi you can see one hydrogen bonding second hydrogen and guanine will always pair with cytosine and they will have three hydrogen bonds मतलब अगर आपको एक स्ट्रैंड की सीक्वेंस पता है दैट इट इज जी ए सी टी टी सी तो यू कैन प्रेडिक्ट द स्ट्रेस सीक्वेंस ऑफ सेकेंड स्ट्रैंड हु इज गोइंग टू शे से वॉट विल बी द सीक्वेंस ऑफ द सेकेंड स्ट्रैंड क्लास मैम प्लीज रिपीट योर क्वेश्चन i want to ask which will be the sequence of the second strand the complementary strand of dna if we are following the rule of c t g t then a a a a a a g g so is this part clear to everyone have a look and confirm Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. is this part clear to everyone kindly confirm so that we can proceed beta yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, ma so uh, this is how it is actually taking this now once we are 100% sure ki hame ye do strands ke beech ka hydrogen bonding we understand then we will move ahead with the binding of one nucleotide with the other nucleotide. 
so this is one nucleotide this is other nucleotide so uh, i wish to say here if you consider this phosphate to be part of the first nucleotide and this is the second nucleotide you can see the phosphate is common this one is common between first and second nucleotide how this phosphate is attached at the three carbon position of the first deoxy ribose sugar and five carbon position of the second deoxy ribose sugar this is how the nucleotides will get attached let's say he if i am considering this is as the nucleotide of the third one third apni nucleotide hai this is first second third see this one is also attached with the three carbon of the second nucleo uh, deoxy ribose sugar and the fifth carbon of the third deoxy ribose sugar so har ek phosphate jo hota hai wo ek uska ek in third carbon of deoxy ribose sugar se attached hota hai और दूसरा एंड फिफ्थ कार्बन ऑफ नेक्स्ट डी ऑक्सीडाइजो शुगर से अटैच अंडरस्टूड इज इट क्लियर यस मैम यस यस मैम so class is this part clear to all of you yes ma yes ma so yes ma now i am coming back to the question of 5 prime and 3 prime okay so what is this 5 prime and 3 prime see the last nucleotide of this strand we have a free end isn't it does this phosphate have any one to bind with is this phosphate have any one to bind with i hope you can see my pointer can you hear me yes ma'am yes ma'am ye jo yes, last wala apna phosphate hai does it have any one to bind with dna strand to apni itni hi hai does it have any one to bind with it no, no ma'am yeah, no similarly the phosphate which is which will be attached to the last nucleo uh, like last key of the ribose sugar at the end the phosphate will be present it will also not have anyone to bind you yes or no class yes ma'am yes now ma as the i hope you watched the orientation of other strand is exactly opposite this type of orientation is called as anti parallel why anti parallel kyunki ek strand agar aise hai dusra strand aise hai chalo i will make you understand by a diagram agar aap do pens ko haath mein le lo and you adjust them like this we will give you two anti parallel structures is it clear to all of you what do we mean by anti parallel parallel means these two strands will never meet with each other anti why kyunki inki orientation alag hai why aap dekho ye jo deoxy ribose sugar hai isme oxygen ki orientation kis taraf hai is taraf 
in this deoxy ribose sugar the orientation of oxygen is in this side तो अगर ये वाली स्ट्रैंड में इस एंड में फाइव प्राइम में वी कॉल इट फाइव प्राइम और फाइव डैश अगर इस तरफ लास्ट जो फॉस्फेट होगा दैट विल बी प्रेजेंट एट द फाइव प्राइम एंड और यहाँ जो फॉस्फेट होगा दैट विल बी प्रेजेंट एट द थ्री प्राइम एंड उस दूसरे स्ट्रैंड पे दिस साइड विल हैव थ्री प्राइम एंड दैट इज थ्री फॉस्फेट एंड दिस साइड विल हैव Five prime end, end that is five phosphate. Understood this part? So, इसीलिए हमेशा DNA strands anti-parallel होते हैं. This can be asked as a question of two marker. You need to draw diagram and explain why we call DNA strands as anti-parallel. मतलब एक का अगर direction five prime to three prime रहा, दूसरे का direction होगा three prime to five prime. Is this part understood by all of you? Yes, ma'am. Great, great. Uh, today I uh, am going to teach you more, more and will uh, we will see videos later on because I need to make you understand first. Otherwise, if you look into video initially, it will be confusing. Now, uh, this is how the hydrogen bonding is formed. Uh, they enlarge the the right structure and like explained. That how it is done. This uh, curved tail is indicating the attachment site of the uh, deoxy ribose sugar. You can clearly see how hydrogen bond is formed between the two strands of this. Now there was experiment by a living charger. I'm not going into the detail of the experiment. His idea uh, was to. Go for an experiment by which he uh, discovered the rule of complementarity. It's not related related to you much, so I am not sharing here. But the result of this is called Chargaff rule. Okay. So now, what is Chargaff rule that I am going to tell you? Chargaff said that A plus G will be equal to T plus C. Do you agree with Charger? In a DNA double helix, जितने A number में रहेंगे, उतने ही T रहेंगे and जितने G रहेंगे, T C रहेंगे. Because that is the complementary rule, isn't it? Yes. 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 Let us prove Charger's rule at our own level. I am going to draw a DNA double strand here. Okay, clear. Count the number of total number of A in these two strands. What is the total number of A? Six. 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 Total number of B. Six. Total number of T. Six. Total number of C. Also six. So can you see? Even if I like kind of alter this and add one eighty here, even if I do that, then also it will be having same data. That is seven plus six, seven plus six. Why? Because A always pair with T and G always pair with C. So if A is there in one strand, in other strand there will be T. So this is called Chargaff rule that A plus G is equal to T plus C, and actually you can write it in this format: A plus G divided by T plus C equal to one. Understood? Yes, ma'am. Now uh, there may be some questions related to this Chargaff rule, which are frequently asked, beta. That is find out the percentage. Now, if I tell you in uh, one strand the percentage of A is thirty percent, can you tell me the percentage of C? Sixty-five. 
Twenty percent. Twenty percent. Yes. How you calculate thirty plus G? We don't know thirty plus C. So it will be G plus C will be equal to sixty. Sixty. As we know that G is equal to C, so we can say two C is equal to sixty. Oh, as it is percentage, we need to calculate. Like we need to minus it from one way down. Sorry, sorry. We need to do it in this way. Let me give you a proper equation so that it will be easy for you to understand. Let's not go take a shortcut method. We have to solve it like this. A plus G is equal to C plus T. So as this is thirty, this will be equal to hundred. If this is thirty and this is thirty, so it will be hundred minus X equal to hundred minus X. Plus thirty. So we have to basically find out the value of x, isn't it? So it will be how to calculate it. We will have that means if I am taking uh, like things together, you can easily find out the value of x will be two x will be forty, and the value of x will be twenty. Understood this part? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, a uh, very yes, simple way we can solve this type of problems. Let's move ahead. So, uh, I just want to say that in each DNA strand, if you go, in each twist. That means one strand is starting like this and coming back to the same position, but at the top. In each twist of that strand, there are ten base pair, and each base pair is occupying three point four nanometer structure. It is a right-handed fashion. That means the twisting is done like this. It is done in a clockwise manner, and uh, as Each of them are having size of zero point three four nanometer. Then the total length of a single tab turn is equal to three point four nanometer. Is it clear? One turn me ten base pair are there. How many? From here to this point, we will call it one turn. We will call it one turn. एक टाउन में दस बेस पेयर रहते हैं अगर सिंगल बेस पेयर की साइज 0.34 होता है तो पूरी टर्न की साइज कितनी होगी 0.3 मल्टीप्लाइड बाय 10 दैट इज 3.4 नैनोमीटर डू यू अग्री विथ मी यस मैम यस दिस इज हाउ द डीएनए स्ट्रैंड इज लोकेटेड सो हियर यू कैन सी This is the double helical structure, but when you look it uh, by X-ray crystallography, it looks like this because actually molecules are taking its place. Now, in DNA strands, there are presence of minor and major twist. The area where the depression, ये जब helically twist होता है, there is creation of depression. जहाँ जहाँ ये depression ज़्यादा है, we call it Major group 
and jaha jaha depression is less we call it minor group understood the difference between major and minor group group means khadda is this part clear to everyone yahan saaf saaf bataya hai that this is major group and this is minor group yes. you can see the depth yes. each dna like uh, structure is of 20 angstrom width matlab yahan se leke yahan tak aap agar isko measure karoge if you can measure it from here to here this is equal to 20 angstrom but let me tell you that is that is not all uh, dna is not of a single type it has three types of dna all these three types are possible in a single organism ye possible hai ki tino ke tino ek hi type ke organism mein paya jaye kab depending on the condition of the cell if the cell is having less amount of water or more amount of water or high salt concentration that is high ph one form of dna can change into other form of dna we just up to now we studied about b dna this is the structure of b dna jiski width 20 angstrom hoti hai per turn 10 base pair hote hain and jo right handed double helix hota hai so i am not waiting here a dna is a case jo dehydrating condition mein paya jata hai the difference is similarity is it is right handed double helix but the difference is it is having 11 base pair per turn matlab iske jo turns hote hain they are more longer or uh, like major group minor group is there but uh, like uh, they are not as prominent as b d okay Z DNA is completely opposite than other two DNAs. It is quite compact and it is a left-handed double helix. मतलब anti-clockwise twisting होता है इसके केस में. The DNA is coiled like this. Okay. Ah, uh, 12 base pair per turn. That's why I told you that it is very compact structure and major minor groups are quite prominent. they are present in the cell if the concentration of salt is very high we can easily compare uh, look into this table you will be easily understand the difference let me know if you have any doubt in this part ma'am usme hydrating ka matlab kya iska matlab मैम वो एडीएनए आपने कहा ना कि हाइड्रेटिंग कंडीशन में पाया जाता है मैम मतलब वो लॉस ऑफ वाटर होगा हाइड्रेटिंग मतलब प्रेजेंस ऑफ वाटर डिहाइड्रेटिंग मतलब लॉस ऑफ वाटर ओके मैम तो मैम हाइपोटोनिक सेल हाइपोटोनिक एनवायरमेंट होगा ना हां यू कैन से हाइड्रेटिंग लिखा था डिहाइड्रेटिंग लिखा था go into detail of this actually you are going to study about it uh, in your grade 12 but just to show you the picture that how dna is coiled around histone proteins and it is further coiled and coiled from the chromosomal structure just for a reference we will talk about this solenoid model on nucleosome structure in grade 12 uh, this one is the pictorial representation Isn't it nice to pack so much data into mind? Now we will talk about RNA. So uh, 
RNA is something which is not genetic material generally. It is helping us in synthesis of protein. But in some virus, it can be the uh, like uh, genetic material. And it was thought that when evolution hua, first organism jo create hua, uski genetic material RNA nahi ho. Because RNA can have catalytic structure, matab, ek aisa RNA, jisko kisi ki help nahi chahiye, it can go for its own process. It can go for its own replication. That's why ye socha jata hai ki evolution mein pehle RNA aaya ho. Structure me to bohat zada bolna nahi hai. Difference I already said in RNA it is ribose sugar. Uh, in case of nitrogenous basis, thymine is not there, uracil is there. And RNA is generally single-stranded. It's not double-stranded. But in some virus, you can find out uh, double-stranded RNA also. So this is the structure. Yes, beta. Ma'am, please show a previous slide. Yes. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. If you wish, no, I can share this slide to uh, San, uh, uh, Vishwajit sir. Um, he can share in your group. You can read from there. No problem. Ma'am, recording me to aai jayega na? Recording me to aai jayega. It will be there. But sometimes we don't feel like seeing the recording. No? We wish to see the document at that time if you wish. Choice is up to you. Yes, ma'am. So it is a single stranded structure, generally always, but they don't remain single stranded if they find some complementary basis uh, sequences anywhere. They tend to form loop like structures. Just as some joke messenger RNA. If it is having structure like A, B, C, 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 G, then G. Uh, one moment. Then it will have G, A, U. So what will have this part and this part as they are complementary, this machine RNA will bind like this. It will have a loop-like structure. So if you see a long structure of RNA, it's quite natural that sometimes it can uh, bend to create loop-like structure. Uh, depending on the presence of complementary basis. Otherwise, the uh, like uh, other things are same. The uh, ribose sugar is attaching the nitrogenous base at the first carbon only. And 3 and 5 carbon is responsible for attachment of phosphate. Okay. In this case also, at the end, of, there will be one free phosphate group considered. It is at 5 prime. It is at 3 prime. But there is no question of being anti-parallel. You take 2, 3 strand hain. That's why it is never anti-parallel. Any question related to RNA? I am moving ahead. These are the parts I described. And they are so much similar with the DNA. That I, yes, beta. Ma'am, you have to three phosphate groups attached. Hai. मैं वो इजीली जॉइन हो जाते होंगे मैम क्योंकि एटीपी में तो इजी नहीं था ना आह इट वाज नॉट इजी दे रिक्वायर दैट्स व्हाई डीएनए रेप्लिकेशन रिक्वायर आह एटीपी एस वेल एस फॉर्मेशन ऑफ न्यूक्लियोटाइड वाज आल्सो रिक्वायर सम टाइम लगे तो मैम यहाँ पे इजीली होगा कि थोड़ा डिफिकल्टी आए but the ye nucleotides bante hai, they are there. They are actually okay. there. So uh, this is how the bond is there. I hope the bond is clear. Ye bahut jata hai. I don't want you to people to ever get confused ke kaun kiske saath binding kar hai. Is it clear? And this bond of phosphorus with the ribose or deoxyribose sugar is called phosphodiester linkage. 
this is how the structure in this case there is no one to make uh, hydrogen bond so uh, the bases will remain alone hydrogen bonding pairing rule is same also here in this case also a will pair with u if required in case of the rna there will be no pairing but if is there any requirement of like uh, you know there is synthesis of rna from dna only at that time if there is presence of a in the dna in rna it will be uh, u that is what the complementary rule follow but in rna as it is uh, like uh, single stranded there is no pairing other than the loops rarely it can have double stranded structure like these are the different examples of double stranded structure internal loop bulge loop stem loop and multi branch junction see this multi branch junction is very interesting one just for your information dekho first dna ka ye part jo hai that is complementary to the fourth dna और उसकी ये पार्ट जो है दैट इज कम्प्लीमेंट्री टू द सेकेंड डीएनए सेकेंड डीएनए का ये जो पार्ट है दैट इज कम्प्लीमेंट्री टू दर्ड डीएनए और थर्ड डीएनए का ये जो पार्ट है दैट इज कम्प्लीमेंट्री टू दोर्थ डीएनए दिस जंक्शन आर नोन एज हॉलीडे जंक्शन इज इट इट इंटरेस्टिंग डीएनए क्रिएटिविटी एंड आर एन क्रिएटिविटी in nanotechnology no. lot many structures are prepared by using this natural bonds formation so these are different types of uh, rna just for your knowledge i am displaying it is not part uh, that you should know uh, we will learn about all of them in grade 12 in detail so i don't want to move ahead with discussion of all this part just to know that these are the different types of rna here every part of it is explained but it is not required anyways we are going to study about that just the part i wish to share here is the difference uh, it is neatly summarized over here in the slide that uh, ribose and deoxy ribose this is one single stranded double stranded uh, t and uh, sorry u and t then uh, char gap rule is not applicable to rna as it is single stranded it can be easily destroyed because no one is there to protect that strand uh, dna is comparatively uh, better and it is labile to if you are providing heat it can get degenerated easily very easily whereas dna is quite strong uh, it is generally present in the nucleus because its main role is uh, for protein synthesis but some of them present outside also they are very small also as compared with the uh, dna so uh, dna these are the types uh, mainly b dna exists that's why they mention only one type these are several type on one type means uh, even if it is in the a form b form or z form its main function is to go for uh acting as a genetic material whereas rna there are various function so uh that is what is the difference between dna and rna i hope the nucleotide part is clear to all of you anyone any doubt yes ma'am so as usual we revise always via what Video. video isn't it so we will do the same today is the screen visible i guess the screen is visible to all of you so let me play. All cells require some form of instructions to be able to function properly.
They need guidelines, rules, codes for making materials in the cell. And that code is DNA. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. D for the name of the sugar, N and A for nucleic acid. DNA contains the information that determines inherited characteristics. It has the code for making proteins. DNA is found in the nucleus of eukaryotic cells and in the cytosol of prokaryotes. If we take a closer look at the chromatin inside the nucleus, we can see the structure of the DNA. The DNA has repeating subunits, and those subunits are called monomers, or nucleotides specifically. The nucleotide has three main parts, a phosphate group, a sugar, and a nitrogen base. In DNA, the name of the sugar is deoxyribose, which is part of DNA's name. And there are four nitrogen bases in DNA. The bases are thymine, adenine, cytosine, and guanine. Two of the bases are purines, which have a two-ring structure, and two bases are pyrimidines, which have a one-ring structure. Adenine and guanine are purines, Cytosine and thymine are pyrimidines. I remember the pyrimidines are the bases with a Y in their name, just like pyrimidine has a Y in its name. A purine always pairs with a pyrimidine. And the slanted shape of the DNA molecule causes it to form a spiral or helix. Because DNA is double-stranded, we use the phrase double helix to describe its structure. There are four scientists who are credited with discovering the shape of DNA, and they are Watson, Crick, Wilkins, and Franklin. All of them received a Nobel Prize for their work, except for Rosalind Franklin. She died before the prize was given. Each of these scientists played a role in piecing together the structure of DNA. They learned that along the sides of the molecule was a backbone made of alternating sugar and phosphate molecules. On the inside, like the rungs of a ladder, are the nitrogen bases. Adenine and thymine form hydrogen bonds together. Cytosine and guanine form hydrogen bonds together. To help me remember which bases link together, I think of writing the letters. A and T both use straight lines. C and G use curved lines. I also know that A and T have two hydrogen bonds, but C and G have three hydrogen bonds by saying AT2, CG3. Silly things like this are actually a great memory tool. Strands of DNA are said to be complementary to one another because A will always be with T and C will always be with G based on the number of hydrogen bonds that they want to make. You can predict the complementary strand if you know the other strand. So let's use all of that knowledge about DNA and see if we can identify the parts of this blank DNA molecule. The easiest to label are the deoxyribose sugars and phosphates. They make up the outside of the molecule. Deoxyribose is a pentagon shape, and the phosphate is just a small molecule in between. Next, we need to remember a rhyme, AT2CG3. So the nucleotides with two hydrogen bonds must be A and T, and the ones with three are C and G. To tell which one is which, you need to know that pyrimidines have one ring and purines have two. So cytosine and thymine are the pyrimidines, so they're the one-ringed bases. Adenine and guanine are the two-ringed bases. And now you have a labeled DNA molecule. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Science Pet. So uh, is there any doubt? Again, I'm asking after looking into the video. No, ma'am. So with this, we are done with the chapter that is biomolecules. I wish to give you a overview of the whole chapter as like before wrapping up, um, I think we can uh, have that, have a look at that uh, thing. Uh, by the meantime, if you have any doubts, you are free to ask me. We studied so many things in this chapter, like starting from uh, carbohydrates, proteins, and all. So just make sure that every part is understood by everyone. 
मैम यस बेटा मैम वो जो डीएनए में पढ़ा ना हमने एंटी पैरल अरेंजमेंट वो आप एक बार फिर से रिपीट करो ना ओरिएंटेशन ऑफ डीऑक्सी डाइबोल शुगर इज डिफरेंट बेटा दैट्स व्हाई इफ इन वन स्ट्रैंड द लाइक इन वन इन केस ऑफ वन स्ट्रैंड इफ इट इज फ्रॉम 3 प्राइम टू 5 प्राइम इन अदर स्ट्रैंड इट इज 5 प्राइम टू 3 प्राइम दैट्स व्हाई वी कॉल इट एंटी पैरल ओके मैम अंडरस्टूड यस मैम मैम यस बेटा मैम आप वो फैटी एसिड की डेफिनेशन एक बार फिर से एक्सप्लेन करो ना फैटी एसिड की डेफिनेशन हां मैम आप जरा समझा देना लिपिड्स एक्सप्लेन करते वक्त फैटी एसिड्स आर लॉन्ग चेन कार्बोक्सिलिक एसिड दिस इज व्हाट देयर डेफिनेशन इज एक हाइड्रोकार्बन का लंबा चेन होता है एंड में कई स्लोइच ग्रुप रहता है ओके मैम सो मैम यस बेटा मैम व्हाट आर जाइमोजेन्स दे आर प्रीकर्सर्स ऑफ एंजाइम्स वी टॉक फ्रॉम फेस पेप्सिनोजेन Is it clear? पर मैम उनका फंक्शन क्या होता है यू आई एक्सप्लेन टू यू दिफरेंस और द फंक्शन ऑफ पेप्सिन What what does why we require pepsin or jelly? Why we don't have pepsin over there? Because they are Let. converting from inactive to active. Ah, inactive to active. Why we need them? Proteins. Ah, uh, that is enzyme. Yes, anyone else? Ma'am, to act upon that protein for digestion. Why it require inactive? क्या मैम उसकी इनएक्टिव फॉर्म क्यों चाहिए वहां पे सारे पेप्सिनोजेन तो मतलब अगर एक्टिव हो जाएंगे तो तो वही पूछ रही हूं मैं तो आई एम आस्किंग दैट तो तो क्या होगा आई डिडंट मेक यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस पार्ट हां मैम बताया था क्या होगा इट विल स्टार्ट डाइजेस्टिंग वॉल ऑफ स्टमक दैट इज व्हाई इट वाज देयर इन द इनएक्टिव फॉर्म आई टोल्ड दिस टू यू मैम मैम और ये जो इन्फॉर्मेशन होती है कैरेक्टर्स की फ्रॉम जनरेशन के पास होती है इन्फॉर्मेशन मैम वो एक्चुअली नाइट्रोजन बेस पेड में ही होती है ना हाँ इट इज देयर इन दम ऑफ नाइट्रोजन बेस ओके Any other question? Anyone? If not, then no, let's have a revision video and let's conclude with this chapter. Think for a moment about your very favorite food. What is it? Pizza, macaroni and cheese, chicken salad, sushi. Well, we all have different food preferences, but food is a source of large molecules that are needed for life called biomolecules. There are four major biomolecules that make up all of life, and this will be the focus of this video. Before we get into details about the four biomolecules, we need to talk about one very important vocabulary word. 
the word monomer. A monomer is a building block. If I had some large substance, the parts that make up the substance are called monomers, just like building blocks. We're going to talk a lot about monomers today because we need to understand what the biomolecules are made of. And we need to understand biomolecules because they're building components of life. So let's introduce the four biomolecules now and talk a little bit about their functions. We'll start with carbohydrates, carbs. Well, carbs are something that you've probably heard a lot about when people are talking about diets. You know, they try to go low carb or maybe they want a lot of carbs. Diets always come and go. Pasta and breads are examples of foods heavy in carbohydrates. Carbs are actually a very important source of energy. In fact, that's one big function of carbs. They are a great, fast source of energy. If you were a marathon runner, you might want to eat a lot of carbs the night before a race. Lots of marathon runners do this. It's called pasta loading. They eat a big pasta dinner the night before they go out on their marathon. Now, carbs have a monomer. Again, remember, monomers are building blocks. The monomer for a carb is a monosaccharide. I know that's a big mouthful, but monosaccharides make up carbohydrates. Next one up is a diverse group known as lipids. Lipids are better known as fats, and they have two different types of building blocks. One type of building block is called a fatty acid, and the other type is called a glycerol. Now, examples of lipids include butter, oil, and cholesterol. Lipids, though, they have a lot of great functions. You might think, well, that's fat. How good can fat be? Well, it just depends when you put it into context. For example, you know those really adorable seals that you see on calendars? They have this fluffy white hair. They're actually called a harp seal. Well, they only look like that when they're babies. When they get older, they're not quite as cute. In their little baby stage, they actually have a lot of this hair that they're born with that keeps them warm. But over time, they have to develop blubber. It's fat, and it helps keep them warm. Lipids are great for insulating. Also, you might not think about fats as being related to energy, but fats are a great source of long-term energy. They can store energy for a long, long time. Say, for example, you wanted to swim the English Channel. That's like 21 miles of swimming. And the fastest swimmers might be able to do that in seven or eight hours, but it might take a lot longer than that for the average swimmer more like 25 hours, and that's a lot of swimming. Well, you would want to make sure that your body has enough lipids, enough stored fat that it can pull upon. Because after you burn off those carbohydrates, remember, carbs are the fast source of energy, well, you might not have enough energy storage unless you have some lipids on hand. Lipids also make up cell membranes. So they are very important for life because all living things are made of cells. Of course, an excessive amount of lipids could be a bad thing for your health. Remember, it's all about moderation. Okay, next, proteins. Now, when you hear about proteins, a lot of times you might think about power bars. They say they have a lot of protein in them and that they help with muscle building. Well, protein is great for muscle building. Examples of foods that are high in protein include meats and many types of beans. The monomers of protein are amino acids. So sometimes you see these labels that say, this has 20 amino acids in this food. And really they're just trying to say that it has protein because proteins are made of amino acids. So that's just some fancy advertising for you. But in addition to being important for muscle development, protein is also very important for other functions such as working in the immune system and acting as enzymes. Remember, enzymes are made of proteins, so proteins are important for the body. Now, when we start talking about genes, the DNA genes, not the genes you wear, the DNA codes for proteins that are very important for structure and function in the body. The last biomolecule is known as a nucleic acid. Nucleic acids include DNA and RNA, which we'll get to when we get to genetics. They have a monomer called a nucleotide. It's going to be an easy one for you to remember because nucleotide sounds a lot like nucleic acid. And if considering DNA and RNA, both of these are involved in genetic information for the coding of your traits. 
They are found in a lot of your food because whenever you eat something that came from something once living, it can still contain the DNA. For example, when you eat a strawberry, you're actually consuming all the cells that make up that strawberry. And in the nucleus of all those strawberry cells is DNA. Plants and animals both have DNA. In fact, any type of life must contain nucleic acids to direct the cell's activities. So we just powered through introducing the four biomolecules by providing examples, exploring their monomers, and giving some general functions. One last very important part to mention is the structure of these biomolecules. Understanding the structure can help with predicting their properties and easily being able to identify them. One thing I like to tell students to do is to write the four biomolecules in the same order that we went through. Carbs, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Then remember this mnemonic device that goes with these four biomolecules. Cho, cho, chon, chomp. Instead of chomp at the end with an M, it's chomp at the end with an N. The C stands for carbon, the H stands for hydrogen, the O for oxygen. So carbs, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids all have that CHO in there. It's just that proteins and nucleic acids also have an N, which is nitrogen. And nucleic acids additionally have a P, which is for phosphorus. So again, CHO, CHO, CHON, CHOMP the major elements in the four biomolecules. Now, these elements are arranged differently in the four biomolecules. It's important to explore the arrangement of the elements in biomolecules because the structure of that arrangement greatly impacts the biomolecule function. So, to the Google to discover some biomolecule arrangement illustrations. Well, that's it for the Amoeba Sisters, and we remind you to stay curious. I guess the video was nice. It was a nice revision for all of us, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We are done. I wish you people to look into the at least NCRT questions of this chapter. And we may have some extra questions discussion next day so that we can confirm that this chapter is done. <coughs> so we are meeting on Monday for this discussion. And then we will start as uh, we thought that we will go to the first unit and start with classification. Okay, class. So bye to of all of you. Happy week. Have a ha happy weekend and good night. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Good night. Bye.